Continuing on, question number 26. According to the passage, researchers have identified which mechanism as potentially responsible for the initial re attraction between the microscope tip and the saw. I really believe that we have this one underlined. <clears throat> right around here where the tip was far away, there was no measure forced. So what's the attraction? But within about seven nanometers, very strong attraction rapidly developed between the diamond tip of the microscope and the salt. Salt actually stretched out. So, it's, oh, here it is. The tip and the salt might be due to electric static forces, perhaps good old Van der Waals interactions. So showing you that reading, <clears throat> predicting what the questions are going to be, and active reading helps. So according to the passage, researchers have identified which mechanism as potentially responsible for the initial attraction between the microscope tip and the salt. Was it gravity? No. Was it nano imprinting? I got to check back. I want to say no, but I'm not going to get rid of it. It was not surface tension. Van der Waals interactions. So between nano imprinting and Van der Waals, it's right here, perhaps good old Van der Waals interactions. That's the answer. D. As used in line 42, most nearly means. Line 42. We're looking. Got so excited, I forgot what the word was. Lead to. Several mechanisms might. The electricity, including the excessive surface tension found at the nano world. So I'm going to say result in. Several mechanisms might result in a simple word, um, like being the product of. <clears throat> Might produce, result in, or produce. Covering up our potential answers. Lead to might mean. Guide to. Our words were result in or produce. That does not mean result in or produce. Oh, result in. Point toward, start with now. So result in. Based on the passage, which choice best describes the relationship between salt behavior in the nano world and the macro world? I think we underline this answer anyway. In both the nano world and the macro world, salt can be flexible. That's very true. I like it. Keeping it. B. Salt flexibility is expected in the nano world, but is surprising in the macro world. I think it was surprising in both. It was not expected. In fact, they said other metals were expected, but salt was not. Salt nanowires were initially observed in the nano world and later observed in the macro world. We didn't have any times. We didn't have any dates on which one was found first. They're saying that under the surface um, that it's happening naturally. Um, but we didn't have any dates to indicate in what chronological order it happened. In the nano world, salt's interactions with water lead to very different properties than they do in the macro world. There was no indication of that. And so A. Which choice provides the best evidence to the previous question? We're looking that in both the nano world and the macro world, salt can be flexible. I'm really hoping we have this one underlined, but I'm having a look to where can we eliminate? So we are at the very end of our questions. There hasn't been any tables in between. So we can really determine that um, line 42 was the last line that we used, we can get rid of anything before line 42. Because this ends on 42, I'm gonna keep it just for safety's sake. 
So we're looking for that salt can be flexible in both the nano world and the macro world. And so we'll start with 39 to 42. The initial and to speculate. The initial traction between the tip and salt might be due to electrostatic forces, perhaps good old Van der Waals interactions. The researchers speculate. That doesn't tell us anything about the macro world, so we're going to get rid of that one. And then 51 to 53, for following question order rule, this would be correct anyway. From huge to scales. Huge underground deposits of salt can be like plastic, but water is believed to play a role at these scales. So bringing it out into the macro world. Now we're on the graph. We're already on the graph. According to information in the graph, when the microscope tip is moving away from the salt surface, I think I underlined something like this, but let's read all of it, and 15 nanometers from the surface, what is the approximate force on the microscope tip in micronewtons. So, okay, we're looking in here. The microscope tip is moving away from the salt surface. So we're gonna look for moving away. Okay, moving away from the salt surface. And is 15 nanometers right here. From the surface, what is the approximate force on the microscope tip? This is force on the tip. So the answer is 0.75. There's our answer. Based on the passage and the graph, which label on the graph indicates the point at which the salt nanowire breaks? So this is what I remember from the passage as well. Within about seven nanometers, a very strong attraction rapidly developed between the diamond tip of the microscope and the salt. But when the tip was far away, there was no measured force. So we're looking at, it's gonna break the farther away it is. So we're not moving toward the salt surface, we're moving away. And the farther away it is, it's going to break. The closer it is to it, the stronger the connection. So we can assume that up here, as we're moving toward the salt surface, the connection is getting stronger. As we're moving away, the connection is gonna break. The farthest away, distance from the tip to the surface is 20, looks about 21, which is T, 21, 22, right around there, 21, 22, which is T, T. So the answer is T. And there you have it, science with table. We predicted a lot of those questions. Most of the questions when we went back into the reading, we had already underlined. We had our theme, we found our theme, we found the research design, we looked at names. Couldn't be any easier. Let's see what the SAT has for us next.